Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we will be looking into how we can debug a Java application running on a Kubernetes cluster. We will attach a remote debugger using IntelliJ IDEA and then we will attach a remote debugger using Visual Studio Code. So with this let's get started. So I have this particular application here in which I have a single endpoint and I'm going to hit that particular endpoint and debug this particular application. So let's look at the code that I have here. I have this particular web controller which has a single endpoint it is a slash endpoint and then afterwards I'm going to just going to return that everything is all fine. Simple application not much of complexity inside it and what I'm going to do now next is I'm going to build a docker image. For this, I have this particular plugin called as the JIP plugin. So if you see here, I have this particular JIP plugin in which I'm specifying that I'm going to use the base image as OpenJDK 17. And the output image is going to be of this particular pattern. That is, it's going to have the project name and then it's going to have the project version. I'm making use of the GitHub's repo to push my Docker images. Now in the execution section, I have specified that during the verify phase, actually create this particular Docker image and push to the GitHub repo. So now with this, let's actually create a Docker image. So for this, I'm going to run maven clean verify and I'm going to just skip the tests for now. Okay, if you see here now, this particular image has been built and it's also been pushed onto the GitHub repo. Now, next what we are going to look at is how we are going to deploy this onto a Kubernetes cluster, right? So for this, I have this particular helm chart here. It's a very simple helm chart wherein I have this deployment in which I have the image that I want to deploy. I'm telling it that it always should pull that particular image while deploying onto the Kubernetes cluster. And I have these particular two ports. The first port that is 8080 is the applications port. And the second port is this 5005, which I will explain you now. I have this particular environment variable called a Java tools option and I've specified this particular string with some information inside it. Now this information is actually required to actually debug this application inside the Kubernetes class. So this is the line that you need to put in into the environment properties and then this will allow you to actually debug your application on the Kubernetes cluster. Now next what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy this onto a Kubernetes cluster. So for this I have this K3S cluster which I have and I have right now no pods inside this Amrut namespace. So first what I'm going to do is to deploy this particular helm chart that I have here and then we'll try to connect our ID that is I'm going to use IntelliJ to connect to that particular application. So let's actually install that particular application. So helm install application on the namespace and I'm specifying the name of the helm chart. So if you see the helm chart is installed and the application is deployed. Now let's actually wait for this to actually come up and if you see the application is up and running and it's already ready to serve requests. Let me cancel this now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to port forward the port 8080, right? That is the application port. So kubectl minus n amrut. I'm going to specify the name of the Kubernetes port. So here, so the port 8080 is port forwarded. I'm going to do the same now for the port 5005. I'm going to specify here and I'm going to give it the name of the port. So port 5005 is also port forwarded. Now what I'm going to do, I need to actually connect my ID, right? I'm going to go here and say edit configuration. Now in this edit configuration section, what I'm going to do is add a new remote JVM debug here. I've already added a configuration here and I'm specifying here is that this particular remote JVM is right now on the port 5005 on my local system. Now, if you're running that particular jar on your command line, you can actually specify this as one of the command line arguments while starting the application. But we don't need to do this. We have already specified this information as a part of the deployment here. Now, actually, let's run this particular remote debugging. So as you can see, the debugger has been connected here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a simple curl request. So I'm going to do curl and you see that the debug point has been triggered. So this is the debug point that I had set before and the debug point got triggered here and this has actually paused the particular response here. Now when I press F9, it will actually continue this particular execution. So this is the way you can actually debug the application in IntelliJ. Now let's see how you can do the same in Visual Studio. Now I have Visual Studio open here with me. Now what I need to do is I need to create a debug configuration. So for this, let me go here in the run and debug section 
and I'm going to click on this particular gear icon to open the launch.json. Now in this, I'm going to specify this particular configuration. What is important here is the request type that is attached, the host, the port, and the project name. The project name is actually this particular project name, which is the Java project. It's now with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this particular debugger. Now, if you see here, the debugger has started and you can see this particular tool here, which allows you to resume, to go ahead or to even stop that particular debugger. Now, let me set a debug point, which is here. Let me actually now make a curl request again. So as you can see, I reached that debug point and it paused that particular application execution. Here. Now, when I continue this, it will give me the response. Everything is all fine. So we saw how we can debug a Java application running in a Kubernetes cluster and then attach a remote debugger using IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code. Now I keep on exploring such kind of things. So if you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this particular channel for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.